This is the BMC SLR01 model of the past four years. Now, if you wanted to make this frame set 16% lighter or 222 grams lighter, this is actually what you'd have to do. Now, you're probably not gonna to wanna to ride that. So instead, this is what BMC have done with their latest SLR01 model. And for this discussion, we're gonna speak with BMC's head engineer, Steve Fu. We started the development of this bike in spring 22. Wow. So it's two and a half years. Okay. Uh, almost two and a half years uh, in the making. How many people were involved? Uh, in total, it was a team of seven people. That's including people from Impact Lab who do the, the prototyping. That's including industrial design. Then of course, engineering and product management. So I want to talk about lightness because that's where a lot of people are talking about this bike. 16% lighter, 220 grams in a medium. Was that the KPI or was the KPI originally just to make it as light as possible without losing anything else? You, you are right, it's the second one. At BMC, okay. we put priority on stiffness okay. that we don't want to lose. So we have clear KPI numbers for stiffness, tar stiffness targets. And then we just try to go as light as possible. So the result was what you mentioned, those 16% or 220 grams. But that's just what we were able to achieve by maintaining the stiffness targets that, that we set for this bike. So when you go to take weight away from a bike that's already very light, yeah. where do you start? Overall, there's, I would say, three axes that you can follow. Um, one is always there, it's the materials. So time is evolving, you have better materials, you have better production processes. So that's one axis that you have to work on. And then the second axis, it's pretty obvious, is the surface of the frame. If you can shrink tubes, make things smaller, automatically you save surface and through that you save weight. And I would say this is on the structural side and then there's one aspect that is often overlooked. It's actually also the cosmetic side. So we have worked very hard to reduce the weight of our finishes. So in the very lightest finish we offer, that we call VAR Zero, there is only 30 grams of finishing on the frame. Compared, while to, compared to what previously? Typically, it was more like 50 to 60 grams for, a, let's say, non-bright color paint. And when you go to a bright color paint, you have easily 80 to 100 grams on the frame set. So in artwork, we were looking at thicknesses of, of, of coating, but then also not go with crazy colors that need a lot of uh, weight and work more with decals. So those three axes, uh, it's material and process, then it's tube shapes and artwork. This is where the sum of those 222 grams is coming from. Mm. So with the materials, are you talking about carbon fiber or you're talking about resins or you're talking what are you talking about specifically specifically it's carbon fibers but of course we also try to evolve with the process that whenever we have um, agglomeration of I would say carbon material due to the manufacturing we try to reduce those so you can imagine for instance at the end of a fork blade you have a dead end and automatically there is resin and carbon that is somehow collected there and we developed methods to have less of this material wherever we have uh, yeah dead ends and things like that so you remove the the areas that get material rich because on the tubes, honestly, a certain wall thickness, we cannot go below. For instance, 0.6 millimeters, what we feel comfortable with. If you go lower, then the frame gets um, very fragile to mechanical damage. For instance, uh, if it falls, uh, it falls on, a, on a pole or something, you immediately would have a rock. So there's a low limit of how thick you can go. Uh, but it's true that resins and materials, they continuously evolve. And we have learned a lot with our uh, T-Machine R uh, about the fiber mix. I would say how much of which fiber we can use to make it stiff and strong. And this definitely also was included in this bike.
Interesting. And what about manufacturing processes? Without going too deep, as I'm sure it probably gets pretty technical, but what's evolved that enables you to be able to manufacture a frame even lighter from a manuf- just purely yeah. from a manufacturing yeah. perspective? So overall, we work, I think, with, with the process that is kind of known. The frame is a three-piece construction. You have the main frame, and then you have a left and a right side a rear end. From that side, it is nothing spectacular. I would say we work with bladder molding, where of course today the inner bladders, they are net shape to the space that, that is resulting. So you can do the, the pre-prec very uh, precise. It's just going really the extra step of removing all the material that is not needed for strength and stiffness. Just on the stiffness, is it the same stiffness uh, KPI that you achieved with the last SLR01 or the previous model, or is it actually stiffer? We have, uh, in general, I would say if you look at all stiffness values, we targeted similar values. If we are more specific, we have targeted a higher rear triangle, rear triangle okay. which, which results in a power transfer that is a bit more direct. Okay. And we were also able to increase slightly, I think it's by 5%, the torsional stiffness uh, of the frame. This gives you even more precision when you go downhill. Yep. And I think it's one of the reasons why the bike is confidence inspiring. So overall, the stiffness level is very high for a bike of this weight category. This I can say that's due to the fact that I think in general, BMC bikes are among the the stiffer bikes, but also we want to have it like that. Uh, First of all, we know the team riders, they like aspects of that but also stiffness translates in great acceleration and also confident, inspiring uh, ride in general. Okay, so it's 16% lighter, a a little bit stiffer than the previous model in certain areas. a little bit, yeah. Has it been compromised in any way compared to the previous model? Like you're taking a lot of things away in terms of weight and you're improving stiffness. It feels like there's something's got to give, you know? I have the feeling uh, we did not compromise anything also because we had clear KPIs and somehow the weight was a result. So we, we knew that this is the numbers we want to hit. No, I honestly, I have to say, I mean, even aero is improved. For me, everything that we can measure, we have improved. Now, of course, uh, how the bike uh, rides in general, I think this depends also on the, on the components, on the tire spec. Here we are still with rather small tires, but you can go easily up to 32, which then, of course, transfers a bit the right feel. But yeah, honestly, I think there's no compromise on okay. this bike. Yeah. Do you think 32 is enough for today? I think 28 or 30 for such a bike is what I see as the sweet spot. Okay. Today, yeah. Because I still see people do not dare to lower the pressure in the tires. Yes. I mean, each time I go on an event and I ask people if they have 28, how many PSI you have, they, they give me a number that is way too high for what they should ride. Yeah. So what's the point of riding bigger tires? And also in racing, I think we, we see that it's a super good compromise between weight, aero, rolling resistance, Puncture resistance and comfort, I think, is really around, uh, I would say, the 28 to 30. I yeah, think. okay. This is, this is where I see it converging. So you, you think the demand for, because there seems to be a bit of demand growing for people wanting, you know, 34s. <laughs> like, it seems yeah. like it's getting ridiculous. From yeah. an engineering perspective, you don't, you don't think it's necessary? No, and I think it's clear that you always want to have the option. But, you know, even the people who ask for 34 or 36, in the end, they write 32. Okay. <laughs> so, but but it, it's logic because we always want to buy... More is better. We always want to buy capability. Right? Yeah. Um, personally, I can speak from my experience riding uh, 35 tires. To me, it starts to feel a bit sluggish. And you lose what, for instance, I love a lot on the road bike is this direct feel that you are directly connected with the road. And if you go to bigger tires and, and ride the appropriate pressure, somehow it, I think you lose a bit of this, this responsiveness, this directness that we all like about light bikes, but road bikes in general.